Last week, I was a part of a conversation where few of my software engineering friends were discussing salaries. One guy said his friend got a job in Amazon with half a million dollar package and now all he needs to work, do is work there for a few years, then he can retire and live a very happy life. And this person who was discussing this story said, I'm not very happy with my job. Maybe I will prepare for fang companies and once I get a job which my friend got, maybe I will be the happiest man ever. When I listened to this conversation, immediately I started thinking about the other conversations with that I had with my friends who are already working in fang companies. They are already multimillionaire. They have achieved all their material needs, a big home, car, secure investments and so on. And they are still dissatisfied. So there is this concept called a rat race where you are constantly running behind money and power and the best job and you keep on running and you are never satisfied. Once the material desires are satisfied, you try to make yourself happy by buying a new car. Let's say I have a Toyota Camry, I want to now buy a Tesla. You want to buy a new home, I have three bedroom home, now I want to buy five bedroom homes. Or sometimes you want to just donate to a charity to satisfy the existence, your own existence on this earth. And people do all of this, but they're still not living a meaningful, purpose-driven uh, life. I'm also getting a lot of messages on LinkedIn where people ask me that they're not happy in their job, they want to change a career. So it, there is a BCom person, MCom person who wants to become data scientist. I'm getting so many of such messages. And pursuing good career, working for big companies is good. But I think we all need to spend some time in finding a true purpose of our life. It's called Ikigai. I read this book called Ikigai. It's a Japanese term. And what it means is you build a career around your purpose, your calling. And then that career not only gives you money, but a lot of satisfaction in the life. I myself have found such a career after going through a lot of struggle and I'm going to share my own story as well as I'm going to mention some steps that I have come up with which any of you can follow and you can find a good career for yourself. At the core of the pursuit of this finding based career question is this diagram which I found from this book Ikigai where Ikigai is the best career for you which is an intersection of what you love, what you're good at, meaning your skills, what you can be paid for, and what the world needs. And I myself went through a horrible health crisis a few years back, where due to the autoimmune disease that I had, I was reduced in bones and skeleton. You can see my picture. I was just eating raw fruits and vegetables because I couldn't eat anything else. And I thought I would die. So when you have this near death moment, you start thinking about bigger question, which is what is the purpose of my life? All the money, big career, cars that you have, all of them seems futile. And I went through that experience. And at, the, at that moment, I started thinking, hmm, if I'm going to die in let's say two years, what should I be doing right now? And also I wanted to give myself a break because my disease, autoimmune disease was uncurable and I was just Googling all the time. You know what happens when you do Google, you get depressed. So I want to distract my mind and I thought I would, I want to do something meaningful in my life. And I started this quest of figuring out what is that thing? And as a first step, I took a note and a pen and I wrote down few things for which I have received compliments from other people in the past. Now these compliments could be smaller. You know, someone might say, oh, you do good photography or you're very good in public speaking. It could be a small compliment, doesn't have to be big. And I found three things, photography, poetry, and the third compliment I always received is, I can explain things really well. 
So then I started doing experiments and I started asking these questions to myself. So let's take photography, for instance. When I went through photography and I, I ran, ran it through this Ikigai diagram, what I found was photography was something I loved. So to find out what you love, you can ask this question. If you are tired and exhausted after a long day, and if someone asks you to do, let's say, photography, can you do it? For me, if I'm tired and if someone asks you to ask me to do photography, I do it. I love it. If, if there is something you love, you can do it even if when you're tired. Are you good at it? So I had taken photographs in the past. I have my photography blog as well. And people give compliments. They say these pictures are really nice. So when people keep on saying that your, your wife, your friends, you know, if you are on social media, public can give comments. That's how you figure out if you're good at something or not. The third aspect was, does world need photography? Yes, you know, there is marriage photography, wedding uh, occasions, there is nature photography, world definitely, definitely needs good photographers. So this is what world needed. But look at the fourth angle. Can you be paid for it? Well, see, photography is very competitive. I knew that there are so many photographers, right? Nowadays, even with your, with your cell phone, you can take a best quality pictures. So this did not satisfy the fourth criteria where I cannot pay my home mortgage by doing photography. I can earn little money, but not a whole lot. You have to be really competitive. You have to be like extremely good and ahead in the competition. It's just too competitive. So since it did not satisfy all four, four criteria, what I did is I moved on to the next choice, which was poetry. Poetry, same thing. I loved it. I was good at it. Yes, world appreciates and needs good poets, but how much poet can earn? Again, I can't pay even my mortgage by writing poetry. So then I look at the the third thing which I was already doing, which is my programming job. My nine to six programming job. I have been doing this for a long time. I was good at it. The world needed it. Yes, a lot of companies need good programmers. I was getting paid. I was getting paid really well for my programming job. But at the heart of it, I did not love that. Programming, I like it but I did not love it. There is a difference between liking and loving. It's like if I'm tired after a 10 hour work day, if someone asks me to do programming, I'll be like, oh man, give me a break. I will do it tomorrow. So then programming job was also not my key guy. Then I moved on to the next thing, teaching. So explaining things in a very well way means teaching or mentoring. And I found Teaching was something which I loved. Even when I was tired and someone asked me to explain something, I would get excited. My eyes would lit up. The world, of course, needs good teachers, right? So it satisfies all these three criteria, what you love, what you're good at, what the world needs. Now, what you can be paid for? So COVID came and then this whole boom of online education started. And I saw a career opportunity where I can start a YouTube channel. I can explain complex topics in a simple way. I can maybe do a paid video courses and I can earn a lot of money. So then I found teaching to be my Ikigai. So the skill I had was explaining things. And that's what, that, that was a raw skill. You need to take an effort and build on this raw skill and turn it into a career. I can explain things in a very well way, way means I can have number of careers. I can become a professor at a university. I can become a YouTuber, explain programming talk with topics on YouTube. I can become Udemy instructor. So when you have a raw skill, you're liking your Ikigai, you can build different type of careers. It doesn't have to be one career. So then based on 
this experience. I started YouTube channel, the channel really grew. I kept on working it for again and again because I loved it. So I did it on, I did it along with my nine to six job on weekends, even weekdays during nights because I was not tired. I absolutely loved it by heart. For that reason, I did it for a long time. Right now I'm like fourth or fifth year in my YouTube channel. It has crossed half a million subscribers. I have left my job and this is what I do now. So amazing things can happen once you find your Ikigai. And if you want to find out your Ikigai, try these steps. These are the steps which I have come up with based on my own experience. So first is, list down the things on which you have received compliments. It is the same list that I showed you, right? Photography, poetry, whatever. Everyone is good at something. So you need to just list those things down. As I said, it could be a minor thing, minor compliment that someone gave you. Maybe you are good at making people laugh, right? You could be good uh, you are a good people person. You can make relationship fast. Maybe then you should be a salesman or a business analyst. If you can make people laugh, you can be a stand-up comedian. You don't have to be programmer just because you got a degree in computer science. Then pick one thing at a time. And then ask, can you do this thing even if you're exhausted? If the answer is no, don't bother about that thing. Move on to the next thing in that list. But if the answer is yes, then again ask, can you get paid for it? And see, you have to be really creative. The list you will get will be raw skills. Raw skills you need to furnish and then you need to build a career on top of it. If the answer is no, you can't get paid for it, don't bother. Go ahead pick the next item. But if the answer is yes, then furnish the skills, improve the skills on top of that raw skill. When someone said I'm good at explaining things, I took a lot of effort. I produced YouTube videos one by one. I read all the comments that I was receiving and I improved my teaching skill. It took me two to three years. It's not like I got everything since the beginning. I had raw skill, a liking, things I love, a passion. I put a lot of effort in making those skills better. And once you furnish those skills, uh, once you furnish those skills and work on it for a long time, one year, two year, it, magic is not going to happen. You know, in six months, you're not going to be super rich. It will take time, but eventually, you will turn that passion into your Ikigai. Something that you can earn money by doing and you can still live a very happy life. Finding a best career for yourself or Ikigai is going to take some time and effort. It's not just gonna magically happen and you'll get a dream that I should be a data scientist or I should be a stand-up comedian. It will require a lot of experiments with yourself. So first step is you do introspection, you follow the steps that you follow, uh, that I mentioned ju just a few minutes ago, and you pick one possible uh, dream career option for yourself. And then maybe you are working uh, in some company, nine to six job, maybe on side, you know, during your weekend and weekdays, you try that alternate career. For example, you're working as a programmer, for example, okay? And you can really make people laugh. So what you can do is, you can go to the, some social occasion, let's say your friends, birthday party, whatever. And you can do like a stand up comedy show for free. You can make people laugh, you know, but take it little seriously. And then you will start getting compliment. People will say, oh, you can really make people laugh. Then maybe you start a YouTube channel and start posting videos. Then you will get a lot of feedback. You improve based on that feedback. You keep on improving and you do this for a year or two and then you'll get a good sense that, okay, should I consider this as a career option and leave my nine to six job? Sometimes you can make uh, your job, you can do like part time, your job, you know, just do part time if it's possible. And then remaining time you pursue that dream career option. 
and let's say you tried stand up comedy option didn't work maybe now you want to try photography so again you have to go through that cycle you try it out for 3 months 6 months maybe a year and you keep on working hard uh, to establish that thing that side gig and you will get a lot of clarity on what you want no one else is going to come and tell you what is the perfect career for you it is something you have to find it out yourself and while it takes a lot of effort it is totally worth it you know i have experienced this myself i know many people who are living a very happy fulfilled life maybe you might not earn as much money as you might be earning in your regular profession but that's okay in the end happiness matters and what happens is when you are doing things that you love you will get better and better at it and when you are doing something wholeheartedly and you are doing it really well the world will definitely pay you for that uh, that thing there is this famous movie called three idiots and i'm going to just play a very good dialogue uh, from that movie so you can watch it and if you have any questions related to your career please post in a video comment below pata hai main first kyun aata hu kyun kyunki mujhe machinon se pyar hai engineering mera passion hai passion tera passion pata hai kya hai abhi wo mera bag hai ek chup re tu kya kar raha hai ranjo abhi are tera passion ye hai ye 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 letter jaake post kar लेकिन है क्या वो अरे पांच साल पहले उसने ये खत लिखा था अपने फेवरेट वाइल्ड लाइफ फोटोग्राफर को आंद्रे इस्तेवान आ, इस्तेवान उसके पास जाके हंगरी जाके काम सीखना चाहता था वो लेकिन अपने बाप हिटलर कुरेशी के डर से कभी उसने लेटर पोस्ट ही नहीं किया <laughs> अरे इंजीनियरिंग छोड़ और वाइल्ड लाइफ फोटोग्राफर बन वो काम कर जिसमें तेरा टैलेंट है अगर लता मंगेशकर के फादर ने उसको बोला होता कि तू फास्ट बॉलर बन जा या सचिन तेंदुलकर के फादर ने उसको बोला होता कि तू सिंगर बन जा तू सोच आज वो कहा होते तू समझ रहा है मैं क्या बोल रहा हूं सलाह इश्क करता जानवरों से और शादी कर रहा मशीनों से 